Most of this information comes from publication 946, How to Depreciate Property Tax Year 2022. You can find it on the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Looking at the income tax formula, we're focused on line one income. Remember, in the first half of the income tax formula is, in essence, an income statement, but just an outline, a scaffolding, other forms and schedules flowing into it. One of those, the Schedule C, business income minus business expenses, gives us the net business income. The Schedule C then flowing into line one of income on the income tax formula. First page of the Form 1040, remembering the Schedule C flows into the Schedule 1, which flows into the first page of 1040, line number 8, as we see here. Schedule C, profit or loss from business, income statement format, income minus the expenses. We're focused on the expenses side of things and more particularly focused on the depreciation, noting that even if you're on a cash-based method, you're gonna have to do an accrual thing oftentimes of the depreciation, putting the property, planting equipment on the books as an asset, allocating the cost over the useful life. However, the depreciation standards for the tax code might be different and they might have different objectives than on the business side of things. So we have to be following the tax code. Sometimes they might try to accelerate the depreciation in the current in the in the first half of the year or first part of the depreciation period why would they do that normally for political type of reasons to try to stimulate the economy or whatever uh, they're trying to do so that's basically what we have here we're talking now about the electing the section 179 deduction so note we're talking depreciation the first thing you want to think about is we're putting it on the books as an asset allocating the cost over the useful life that's the normal accounting structure as to why you would be doing that for for depreciation the first one to think about is straight line depreciation that would be the easiest thing to conceptually visualize you're just going to have an an even amount allocated over the useful life of the thing that is being depreciated, allocating the cost evenly over the time frames that you're using it, then you might have accelerated depreciation methods like double declining balance, front loading the first side of the depreciation, which could be useful and, and correct in terms of like equipment, which you might be getting more use out of in the first years than the latter years, which is the accounting uh, defense for like a double declining balance but for taxes the double declining balance is usually good because we want the depreciation up front because deductions are good for taxes right so we'd rather have the deduction sooner and then we can go deviate completely from bookkeeping uh theology thought process and that would be like having a front-loaded 179 deduction for example which basically means we're going to be able to get this big deduction up front similarly like a special deduction these are things that are are basically usually politically related trying to stimulate the economy or something like that that's where we are now so electing the 179 deduction introduction so you can elect to recover all or part of the cost of certain qualified property up to a limit by deducting it in the year you place the property in service so it's going to be important that you have to think about this election when you place the property in service because that's the point in time when you could take the election or not normally if you could take the election usually we would want to because that would allow us to deduct sooner and the typical tax planning strategies would be i'd rather have the deduction sooner than later because of the time value and money and the possibility that the tax code could change but that's not always the case because it might be the case that in future years, I think my revenue is going to be higher than in the current year, in which case my my uh, progressive tax rates might be higher in future years as well. So in that case, you could imagine a scenario where you wouldn't want the 179 deduction in a low income tax year and would rather take it in future years where you think the income level might be higher. So this is the section 179 deduction you can elect the 179 deduction instead of recovering the cost by taking depreciation deductions 
So it's kind of like an accelerated depreciation or you're basically depreciating it all up front. Okay, purpose of form, form 4562. This table describes the purpose of the various parts of form 4562. For more information, see form 4562. So part one, what's the purpose? Electing the section 179 deduction, figuring the maximum section 179 deduction for the current year, figuring any section 179 deduction carryover to the next year. Part number two, Form 4562, reporting the special depreciation allowance for property other than listed property placed in service during the tax year, reporting depreciation deductions on property being depreciated under any method other than makers. Part three, reporting makers depreciation deduction for property placed in service before this year. Makers is like the normal thing that usually comes to, to mind for depreciation methods for tax code, which is kind of a double declining balance, usually with a half year convention, for example, reporting makers depreciation deduction for property other than listed property placed in service during the tax year for uh, part four, summarizing other parts, part five, reporting the special depreciation allowance for automobiles and other listed property, automobiles having its own special rules because of the problems related to automobiles and, and whatnot, reporting makers depreciation on automobiles and other listed property, reporting one section 179 cost elected for automobiles and other listed property, reporting information on the use of automobiles and other transportation vehicles. And then we've got part number six, reporting amortization deductions. Okay, useful items you may want to see publications so you can dive into these publications if you want to get into more detail 537 installment sales so if you have that particular situation 544 sales of sales and other disposition of assets when you're disposing of the assets form and publication form and instructions for form 4562 depreciation amortization you could find these on the IRS website of course irs.gov and uh, form 4797, sales of business property. Okay, so what property qualifies? We're talking 179 deduction here. To qualify for the section 179 deduction, your property must meet all of the following requirements. It must be eligible property. It must be acquired for business use. This is a business type of thing here, not a personal deduction. It must have been acquired by purchase. So you purchased it as opposed to just finding it or gifting it or something like that. You bought the thing. It must not be property described later under what property does not qualify. So we'll talk about that shortly. 